good, good afternoon. Uh, we are going to talk about observation of COVID-19 patients in ICC. So uh, our matron, Mrs. Keita Nudugam Koral, also with me uh, to discuss this, uh, discuss how to observe patients in uh, intermediate care center. So basically what we thought we'll have, uh, we thought we'll be having three levels of care. Uh, green, yellow, and red. Uh, the green means there are no comorbidities. At the same time, there are no symptoms. Yellow means there are comorbidities, but there are no symptoms. Red, uh, symptoms are there, so with or without comorbidities. So if the patient has comorbidities or not, if patient has symptoms, we are going to uh, assign them to that level of care. So what are the comorbidities we are going to uh, talk about? Age more than 65 years and uh, cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, chronic respiratory diseases, chronic kidney diseases, obesity and smokers, and immunocompromised and pregnancy. Again, they are, uh, we are considering them as comorbidities, but uh, I think uh, we are not. Uh, I think we should not manage them uh, in an uh, intermediate care center. So, if you have a patient who are having immunocompromised state, who if the patient is pregnant, it's better to transfer this patient to a um, uh, to mm -hmm. another center uh, because they can. Uh, end up with problems. Uh, so when we uh, talk about this uh, uh, level of care, green, yellow and red, as we mentioned earlier, green means there are no symptoms as well as there are no comorbidities. Right? So uh, then the uh, yellow means there are no symptoms, but there are comorbidities as we have discussed earlier. So those are the comorbidities. And uh, the red level of care, that means comorbidities plus or minus. So that, what, that means uh, green level of care, they are, uh, we don't expect them to create much problems, but yellow and then red, of course, yes, the monitoring frequency is different. Okay? And the red uh, level of care, that is the, uh, the, those are the patients we have to monitor frequently. Uh, so when, uh, if, if the patient is in green area, that means there are no symptoms and there are no comorbidities. So vital signs are monitored by the healthcare workers on admission. And, uh, the, and uh, the monitoring will be done once yeah. daily. So basically, what we need is SpO2 and pulse rate and the other tests like uh, uh, modified exertional dyspnea test, better to do if you can do, right? And if, the, if it is necessary. So when we do it like this. Ah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Amani, just continue. I yeah. will scroll down the... Okay, right. Okay, right. Uh, so... Uh, Vital signs should be monitored once daily. And at least on admission, if we can do the modified exertional dyspnea test, uh, it's better. Uh, so the patient will be monitored once daily. Uh, if, you, if, if there are adequate healthcare workers, we can do this monitoring as it's not uh, that difficult uh, because it's once daily. And if you have a, a pulse oximeter, so SpO2 and pulse rate will be monitored. And uh, if they develop symptoms, uh, can you scroll down? Can you scroll up? Yeah. If symptoms appear, so basically what we, uh, the, the symptoms like fever, cough, SOB, chest tightness, right? Not really the very mild symptoms like just a little bit of sore throat or just a little bit of anosmia. So, uh, so if the patient has significant symptoms like fever, cough, SOB type test, or when we do the modified exertional dyspnea test, if it is positive, we have to refer that patient to red level of care. So then the, if symptoms appear at any stage, patient will be taken to the red level of care. Uh, then uh, when we talk about the yellow, yellow 
uh, yellow level of care. Yes, right. So that means there are no no symptoms, but there are comorbidities. So these patients need more frequent monitoring. Uh, then uh, those patients, actually healthcare workers should monitor with uh, like twice daily monitoring, SPO2, pulse rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, temperature. And if, if needed, we can do the CBS and intake output chart as well. We can, we can monitor those as well. And the modified exertional desaturation test. So if symptoms appear, the same symptoms, fever, cough, SOB, or chest tightness, or modified exertional dyspnea test positive, then again, the patients will be taken to the red level of care. So whether a patient has symptoms or not, whether a patient has comorbidities or not, if they develop symptoms, then the patient will be taken to the red level of care. So red level of care means the frequent monitoring Patient should be monitored frequently, that is three times a day, a day and or as needed. Right? The monitoring will be the same, SpO2, pulse, respirate rate, blood pressure, temperature and level of consciousness. If needed, uh, we can do the CBS and intake output chart. So uh, then the... Uh, uh, the, um, when we talk about modified exertional dyspnea test, I think you have a separate video for that. But it is not done if the saturation is below 96. So when you do the resting, resting saturation, if it is below 96, there is no indication to do that. If patient complain of chest pain, SOB, then you can't do that. And if patient has some difficulty in like walking, some joint pains or joint swelling or physical disability, then you can't do that. And if the patient is not compliant, again, you can't do that. So if the, these contraindications are not there, you can do the modified uh, exertional dyspnea test. The protocol will be, uh, first step, you have to put the patient's pulse oximeter in finger and uh, check the baseline saturation. Then uh, uh, the, the, you should ask the patient to sit and rest. We'll be talking about how to record the uh, SPO2 later on. So we have to get the baseline uh, saturation. Then after that, the second step will be, if there are no, there's no contraindications, then uh, we can ask the patient to stand and sit for eight to 10 times or for one minute. Uh, or we can like 40 step walking test also can be done and after that we have to again observe the patient with pulse oximeter uh, and detect the SpO2 drop after initial lag period of 30 seconds so we can we have to wait for 30 seconds and see whether uh, the SpO2 is dropping so if the SpO2 is less than 96 after exertion that means it's positive which means now before uh, like uh, baseline SpO2 is more than 96, it's like more than 96, but after uh, exertion, it becomes less than 96. Right. Uh, so that's how we are going to monitor. Uh, okay. Uh, then can we, can we go to the other chart as well, Dr. Dilanta? I wish I. Yeah. Right. So this is the new observation chart for intermediate care centers. So you can see the initial uh, uh, information, patient's name, age, BHD number, ward number, Days of symptoms. So we take the first day of symptoms as day one. Uh, so like when the patient gets admitted to the, the ICC, it can be day five, day six or something like that. So as uh, Dr. Anand Vikram mentioned, the second week is very crucial. Symptoms might develop later on, even though there are no symptoms initially. Uh, date of first positive PCR or rapid antigen test, we can uh, like that, of course, we have to document there and the CT values, if available, we can document. 
then uh, the we, then we have another the uh, uh, column below uh, to say whether there, this patient has comorbidities or, or not. So if there are comorbidities, you can tick the yes box. And if there are no comorbidities, you can tick the no box. So if there are no comorbidities, you can just go to the observation chart. So if there are comorbidities, you can, uh, like if the patient is more than 65 years, you put a tick the box below. Uh, see cardiovascular disease, hypertension, diabetes, right? Uh, chronic kidney disease, chronic respiratory disease, obesity, smoking. So you can put the tick there. And pregnancy and immunocompromise is also, also like uh, uh, inserted here. But if you put a tick there, that means you have to transfer this patient to a uh, escalate beyond your ICC to another center where this patient can be managed. Uh, so there are strong recommendations. Uh, yeah, okay, right. Can you, like, we'll go down, yeah. Uh, then uh, observations, uh, 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 what are the observations we are going to do? Date and time we have to put there and SpO2 and pulse rate. Basically, those are the two which is needed for, uh, for a um, patient who are in the green zone. If possible, we can do the other test as well, if possible, MEDT as well. Uh, but at least SpO2 and pulse rate, which we can uh, detect with the pulse oximeter. Uh, then respiratory rate, BP, temperature, level of consciousness, and MEDT. So you can, like, observation will be once daily for uh, uh, green zone, twice daily for uh, yellow zone, and at least twice daily for red zone. And then there's a separate, another column to write down the interventions if we have done something. And the level of care, uh, that is uh, uh, whether it's green, red, or uh, yellow. So what you can do is either you can put a, uh, you can paste a, a, a green color sticker there or some green pen, you can make a, like, you can put a cross there with the green pen. Uh, or something like that, just to indicate that the level of care is green. Uh, so when you monitor, when you are monitoring like that, uh, can we go up to see the uh, the box there? Yeah. So then this box says when to escalate the care beyond the ICC. ICC. So we are strongly recommending transferring to a treatment center if the SpO2 nine, below 96 on air. And if the patient is immunocompromised and pregnant, as we mentioned, and if the respiratory rate is more than 25, again, the patient should be transferred to a treatment center. And again, uh, we, we have to consider transferring to a treatment center if initial measures fail. Uh, if patient has high fever after seven days from symptom onset. So as we discussed earlier, initially you can have fever uh, for the viral illness, but if it's getting like going beyond seven days, then we have to think of transferring this patient. And uh, if the systolic BP is uh, getting low, like less than 90, Heart rate either less than 40 or more than 100 without fever or more than 120 with fever. If patient has exertional dyspnea detected by positive MEDT and if patient has altered level of consciousness, less than alert level, AVPU scale, we will be discussing it later. So if you have this, uh, anything of this uh, positivity, positive uh, records, then you have to consider transferring these patients to a treatment center rather than keeping in your uh, ICC. Okay, so can I share my screen then? I can put it in the screen. I can put it in the screen. I can put it in the screen. I can put it in the can up your body in the other known is saturation balanaka take a pulse rate taker. So, up the acre with a racuna come on there asymptomatic comorbidities that the eater. Have I up the comorbidities the other manang 
අනිවාර්යයෙන්ම අපි ඊට එහාට චුට්ටක් ගිහිල්ලා දවසකට ඒ කියන්නේ එක සැරයක් හොද ඉස්සර දැන් සමහර කට ඕගලන්ට ICC වල ඉන්නකොට ගොඩාක් රෙඩ් වෙ ඉන්නකොට ඔක්කොගේම සැචුරේෂන් බලන එක අපි දැකලා තියෙනවා සමහර කට පේෂන්ට්ස් ලගේ උදව් වෙන්න කරනවායි කියන එක එතකොට ඒ විදිහට හරි කමන්න නැහැ ඔගොල්ලෝ එක දවසකට එක සැරයක් හරි ඒක කරගෙන තියෙන ඕනේ සැචුරේෂන් මේන්ටේන් කරන එක එතකොට ඊට පස්සේ අපිට अपने एक दावसर दिसरिया बीपी एक हाई रेस्पिरेशन हुई एक तो कर लेता हमारी एक डैम में ये एक तो आप को हम आप टेम्परेचर चार्ट के आने वाले तो टेम्परेचर का तीन वाला तीन वाला चार्ट के आंदो नहीं आप ही ये तो क्या दागा आंदो नहीं ये तो कुछ तो आप ही तो तुम मेरे लेवल लेकर के आने का रेड सोन लेकर तो गिया कि � अब ये सिम्टम्स आप उपाधियाँ तो मैं टांस या वाणी में नहीं आप ही आप ही बालन है वाह ये आगे वाइटल साइंस एक कर आप ही तो आप पे आईसीसी के मैनेज कर रहा है ना पुलवां देख के लिया ला ये तो कुछ रेड रेड देखे इन्ने पेशन हो आप ही तो आईसीसी के इन्ने पुलवा रेड देखे तो गिया की ना उपको मतलब टांस करानी � या वे मैनेज करना है ना पुरुष आम खामत लेबे ना वा इतने आप ये तो करे एको लांगे अरे लेवल लेख गया ना हरी आओ बोध या किया गान नॉनी कोई कोई वार मट्ट में इंद में ठीक है करेगे नहीं आने के ला ट्रांसफर्स करना नॉनी हेतु ठीक है तमाय आप ही ट्रीटमेंट सेंट है करते हमारे नॉनी हेतु ठीक है तमाय आप ही अन्य एसेसमेंट के गाने समय आप ही में 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 आप ये ऑब्जर्वेशन चार्ट के गा है दुई ये तो आप इतने अर्ली डिटेक्ट कर गाने पुरवाम पेशेंट में कोई विधि आप ही में आते एक मंत्र दून होते क्या ना आप इतने एक मंत्र ट्रीटमेंट सेंटर के आवागत को तो लेबे ना वासी वैदी ये अन्य एक हिंदुत्ता में में सेंडी ए हाँ रे ऐतो कोटे एक हाथ एक कम दे मिस्टर डे पेन ने चीनो एल चार्ट टे के इससे में चार्ट टे के ओ के तीन ने गाइडलाइन ने काफी जरूर है जब पेन ने चार्ट टे के तीन वाला हरा आप ही मूली मस्ती के क्लिनिकल एसेसमेंट टे काफी तीन वाकी ला कोई पेशेंट्स आगे चार्ट टे का एक ही जो ओबलांटे दीला तीन ने क्या है कि तीन लेवल लेकर अन्य ए मात्रा इन दिनों आप इधर ए इतु ठीक है कराना पुरवा मांग जाने आप ये तो बोलते हैं इतु ठीक है ये महीने से ये करेंगे ना अन्य पुरवांग में मेक ऐसे छुट्टा अरे तेरुंगा नॉनी पहासुमा चार्ट देगा काफी तेरुंगा तो तभी तो होंडर तो मेक करेंगे ना अन्य दंग ये चार्ट टेका टेक्स्ट हम आप इधर दंग केस प्रेजेंटेशन सिखा करना आपे मैडम मिक कर ये ठीक है दंग बालम को गलत को हम देखते हुए लगे ले कर ये वाके देख कर दी करेगे नहीं आने की नहीं कर ये ठीक आप इधर पेन्ना नहीं हद आने वो मिस कर कैन यू कैन यू सी अवर स्क्रीन नाउ यस डॉक्टर डामियर क� Right. So the uh, so we thought of uh, uh, discussing how to assess level of consciousness. GC uh, GCS like things are quite uh, it takes time. So we thought of uh, having a having a simple one like AVPU scale. Uh, a means awake or awake and alert like us if the patient is talking and those uh, talking and conscious and responding well. So that is A. V means patient response to verbal stimuli directed to him. So when you call by his name, he will have some response. Either he will open the eyes or, uh, or like uh, move 
move a limb or something like that patient is but still patient is not awake or alert and uh, if patient responds to pain uh, that is p that means if when you like uh, press his sternum hard then patient will have some sort of uh, uh, response and uh, if the patient is uh, unresponsive or unconscious that is u so below, below a then you have to transfer this patient to a uh, um, treatment center so this is the chart then we'll be discussing some cases right uh 23 year old male admitted to intermediate care center on 20th of june uh he uh, he was screened for covid-19 as his mother became positive for covid few days back he has no comorbidities he has no symptoms a febrile and vital signs are normal uh what level of care he and she needs green yellow or red what do you think green okay good green yes green. that's good yeah so the, that patient is as he is a 23 year old male without any comorbidities and without any symptoms so how frequently do you have to monitor this patient we are assigned him, we are going to assign him to green level of care so the monitoring is needed just the one one a day should be enough. then the second case 69 year old male history of diabetes and hypertension investigated for fever cough and sore throat for two days pcr for covid 19 positive admitted to icc what is the level of care he requires green red or yellow what do you think red 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 no. yes because he has several comorbidities he has diabetes hypertension and he is more than 65 years of age and in addition he has fever cough and sore throat so that is symptoms are there so then definitely he should be monitored in the red zone and the frequency of monitoring should be at least three, three times a day then this is another case 70 year old male admitted to your icc after detecting as having covid 19 infection pcr test was done prior to routine surgical procedure so he was uh, he was planned for herniotomy and repair and the pcr test was done before that and he was not on any medication for any other diseases so he has no diabetes hypertension or anything else and he does not have any covid related symptoms he is a non smoker and his body weight is 100 and is the level of care he, he needs green yellow or red yellow 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 yeah because he has some probably he is overweight and he is 70 years so more than 65 years even though he does not have any diabetes or hypertension and he does not have any symptoms he needs some frequent monitoring than the green zone so uh, twice daily monitoring is needed so this is our fourth case 56 year old female patient with covid 19 admitted to intermediate care center on 20th of june he has she has a history of hypertension and diabetes she is on metformin and losartan for hypertension For admission, she was asymptomatic. Blood pressure one thirty by eighty, pulse eighty two, respiratory rate eighty two, SpO two ninety eight percent on air, temperature is normal as well. What is the level of care he she needs? What level of care? She is a fifty six year old female, has issue of hypertension and diabetes. उट
So you, if you can see here, the patient's records are there. Patient's rate of positive means you are eating it, right? CT and C have written down there. And then the comorbidities here, yes, we have over T there. And what are the comorbidities? Uh, hypertension is there, diabetes is there. Uh, so you have one different disease uh, on admission. admission right? So that is patient what I did from 20 to 60 years. Yeah. SPO2 is okay, so I need to do. Uh, respirate rate is uh, okay, if you are right, temperature is okay. Uh, inflation is alert, A, and uh, so I need to do the health so that is 98. So this patient is in green. So you have put a sticker here. Oh, we can put the cross here. That's is indicating that is the patient is in the yellow, yellow, yeah. Following day, she developed the negus type of blurry eye and she was complaining of hope. SPO 98, the period rate is all right, BP okay, was saying this is consistent and all. Now, what do you want to do? What do you think? Now, patient has developed her symptoms, right? She's complaining of hope and she has developed a fever spike. So, we are going to change the uh, chart, then we are going to change the level of the right? So, uh, even though everything is normal, situation, all these things are normal, as the patient is complaining. Of the next Dabyan, day, is, excuse yeah. me, sir. some people can't it seems here can you come close to the laptop i think that may be the reason some people are saying that can't hear can you hear me now yes yes okay. that's that's good yeah that's good. okay right so uh, uh then of course the second day uh like uh, the even though everything is normal right as the if you if you go through the uh, SpO2 pulse rate, respirate rate, everything, so all these things are normal. Patient is alert, but uh, as the patient is complaining of symptoms, so we are going to assign him to this red level of care. So then the uh, the but me which means the patient needs frequent monitoring now. Then the following day, uh, her cough worsened. And she was complaining of SOB on exertion. On examination, she looks ill. Temperature is high now. She's running temperature. A little bit of tachycardia is there, 100. Uh, Respirate rate is all right, but you can see, as you can see, now the saturation is 94 on air. Now, what I want to discuss here is there are patients. They complain of SOB, but when you look at them, the respirate rate is okay. You do, they are not they, they are not dismissed. But when you check the SpO2, it's low. Right? So that's what we call as happy hypoxia or silent hypoxia, where patient is not tachypneic. You uh, not obvious, patient is not tachypneic, and patient's respirate rate is normal. Patient's work of breathing is normal, but still, patient is desaturating on air. So what should you do now? We'll go. We, we'll see. We'll show you the chart, right? So this patient's. This is the first day, as we discussed earlier. The yellow. Then second day it was red, and then the monitoring frequency has increased. 8 a.m. 2 p.m. 8 p.m. Because we were initially monitoring only once a day. As the patient was in red zone, we were monitoring the patient uh, three times a day. Uh, but all the uh, things were normal except the patient was having high fear temperature. Others were normal. Patient was alert and they have done the MEDT as well. So all these things are normal. But following day 22nd, what you see? A uh, little bit of tachycardia, uh, but patient is having temperature. And uh, respiratory rate is normal. But if you see the SpO2, it's 94. Then the transverse arranged as is if it is less than 96 on air, patient should be transferred to a 
COVID treatment center. So patient was transferred to a COVID treatment center. So uh, we go to the other, other case, 46 year old male admitted to intermediate care center on 15th of June at seven o'clock in the morning. No history of comorbidities and patient is asymptomatic. Uh, on examination, patient looks well. SpO2 98%, respirator rate 20, pulse 78, BP 140 over 80, temperature 37. Uh, so what is the level of care he needs? Yellow, red or green? So we'll be marking the changes in the... Uh, uh, chart. So he's just a bridge, but he needs his green level of care. Uh, so patient was initially monitored like this, and the here of course you can see they have put a green dot here, so that is enough. Right? Patient has no comorbidities, the tick is there and asymptomatic. Right? Uh, date of first PCR was 11th. Right? Uh, CT values. So patient was getting admitted on 15, right? 11 PCR was done. And the CT values you have documented here. Then, uh, so he got admitted on 15, the monitored until 18. So on 18, he was complaining of mild dizziness, cough and exertional SOB. Uh, SpO2 99 on AR, respirator 22, pulse 78, BP 138. What actions do you take? So here actually MEDT is very important. Patient is complaining of cough and exertional SOB, but when you see, when you oh, check the SpO2, it's normal on AR. So here you can do the modified exertional dyspnea test and see whether the patient is desaturating on uh, exertion. So this is how we have monitored. On 15th, day, everything is normal. He was in green level of care. Second day, again, green no level of care. Third day, again, green level of care. But fourth day, on 18th, as we discussed earlier, he was complaining of cough and exertional SOB. So we have to monitor him frequently. So we have assigned him to red level of care. So from here onwards, we have to monitor the patient. Uh, not daily, three times a day. Uh, then, of course, what happened was, uh, this it happened on 18. Then after that, patient's symptoms improved gradually. On 21st, patient completely asymptomatic, looks well. Uh, blood pressure, everything normal. Respirator rate, SpO2, MEDT, everything was all right. Right? Uh, so if you check, if you see the monitoring chart, then up to now green. Then we have put it here red, but immediately was done again, everything was normal, right? Uh, even though patient was complaining of some symptoms, then uh, symptoms improved gradually. The monitoring chart doesn't show any alarming sign, right? So we were monitoring throughout like this. So gradually symptoms improved and here their patient does not have any symptoms and everything is normal. So we have again, put the patient into the green level of care, and then we were monitoring the patient in the green zone and uh, daily monitoring, and patient was discharged later. Uh, so, uh, uh, any any questions uh, you want to ask? Any, any Anything regarding the monitoring chart? I think Matron can... Explain something more about the monitoring chart. Mr. Monat Prashna, the end of the talk of a monitoring chart, the Keranika Sambandi Monahari Prashna, the end of the day, can the Ogland talk again, a pehagili, the Kinekai, a dean, then again, no, you can then some Harakala, young up with a Godak patients like asymptomatic COVID positive, which I have with Rak in the Manang. Api daily or coma value in a tunar fashionak nehe. Api the saturation nekai, pulse rate the kai samai vadagat na vinne. Have a patient complain nekat ekapi 
එයා ඊළඟට දැන් හරි කම්ප්ලේන් කරොත් එහෙම අපි ඉතුරු වේ වටේ යන්න ඕනේ ඒක වැදගත් වෙනවා ඒ අපිට අපි දකින්න වෙනසත් එක්ක දැන් ඕගලන්ට මේක ගැන මොකුත් ගැටලුවක් තියෙනවාද understand any questions? Hello. Oh, oh, oh. Madam, I'm going to show you how to do the bubble chart. How to do the bubble chart? How to do the bubble chart? How to do the bubble chart? Make a podia to name a pediatric name a heavy address. Ito kota center sola podi babala tek inna wan ego lonta mo kada karan no ni med. Ego lonta mo kada ni doctor Dilan sa medyo mas chaate ka diwala sa kala la. Pediatric team. Pediatric team medyo mas chaate ka kaya ni. Doctor Dilan sa mo kada karan babala. Oh, beka papa de use karan na ba ni api ilang step pe kavi diya to na. Beka karamu me dana tama beka. बलला मैं कहती हूँ कि मैस के लिए क्या प्रिंट करना होता है ना दिक्कत है डिसाइड करता है कि नहीं इधर मुनाहरी टाउन लेवल के मुनाहरी ये गोलांट पे मैं कहता हूँ पाप पाप इस चीज़ का ना पटांग करने के लिए नहीं इधर ये मने इधर डॉक्टर दामियां दामियां तो यहीं नया चुटका मैं कहता हूँ आपकी आलू तेम्बर दम में नहीं साम एक ही मना हरी प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम्स से नवाद किए ने कहा ना पटेच्चर लोको आइडिया का अपने आ जाएगा एक नहीं साम एक आपी होना है कि रही तो ना वाह एक तक का मत आवाज़ किया ने देखती है ना दम पेशेंट के ने को ट्रांसफर करना पड़ता आपी तो मैं मैं चार्ट का ऐतकोटा मैं एकत एकत मतलब कराना होने वगैरह में मैं का टिका खरीया पे यूज़ कर ला बैलन कोटा प्रैक्टिकली मना हरी क्वेश्चन सावो तेरे पास अभी जो ना मैं का मॉडिफाई कराना हरी ओने देख रहे हैं अन्ना पुलवा वो का चार्ट का सेंटर के टा ओन ना कलर देखा मैं आप इधर कोटा कॉपी आप का ये वाला पुलवा नहीं द चार्टे <laughs> अ तब बता मैं एक अगर इतना नहीं होता लिया ना तो ये नहीं आने के लिए इतना हो आता है ना इतनी कॉपी बन जाए ये मार देगा तो जंग इधर आमतौर पर जंग आप इधर आप ही लेवल टू आगे आने को तो तीनों ने आपके सीबीएस हम बाला ने आवश्यक हूँ ना तो हम डायबिटिक पेशेंट्स ताकि ए वेला आगे थी आप इधर पुलवां कर्नाटक
හොඳ ඩිසිෂන් එකක් අපිට ප්‍රේෂන් ගැන ගන්න ඉන්ෆර්මේෂන් ටික එක තැනකට එකතු කරගෙන තියෙනවා නේ ආ මේ වගේ ගැටලුවක් තමයි මේකෙන් අපි බලාපොරොත්තු उंडलवाणी उदाहरण रोगी की रुदीर्घात ऑक्सीजन प्रमाण मेन बला कोई प्रतिशत कोविड रोगी यागे प्रधान साधक रुदीर्घात ऑक्सीजन प्रतिशत अनुगमनेक्सीजन प्रमाण बलने हरीम वेदगा मुलखनाशन बला इतकोट आप वेदगाधिंग एक अभी दाण मे ऐंगि तम मे प्रोबे का अतुरान के एक मे मापट ऐंगि मापट ऐंगि तम मे हेम ऐंगि कटम एक मेक दाल तीन अवस्था संहार के आवट मे एक ऐंगि दाल आप बलला आई खराब पुलवा यह मैने मे प्रोबे का दाल इवेरवेला प्रोबे का दाल इवेरवेलाट पास एक दिग्गट में तीन वेन्ना पुलवा अन्न ये हिंद आप वेदगा मे ऐंगि तोर गणी मापट ऐंगि हेम तेन इकन हिंद एक अयंकरण एक दाने अत्यावश्यम ऐंगि बट अब दागने मे प्रोबिक अतुरा बेरीना वितरा ये हिंद अभी मे ऐंगि नेतु मे ऐंगि हतर गो ये ऐंगि हतरे अभी बला प्रधान मे ऐंगि को नियपत व्यवल तीन अदा नियपत व्यवल तीन अभी ये ऐंगि अयंकरा इलाट नेल पोलिश गालतीनो खाता इतोट नियालेपन एवगे तीन ए ऐंगल तपीन एव इवत्त मेक दाण इलाट अनीत वेदगदे समय मे ऐंगि डिस्कलवेला तीन नरकाय एक चली वगे पाट विनाशेला कलुवेलावागे तीन ऐंगि को तपी मेके पाविचरा नह अन्न एम हिंद अब मेते मे ऐंगि हर मेक वगे होंट तीन हिंद अब पुलवांग मे मेद ऐंगि पाविचरा मेद ऐंगि दागत्ता एक सठा कर हसुवेन अभी इतको एक वेला अत गम मेक हो पेन दिया पेन दिए अभी एक 
ඊට පස්සේ අපිට පුළුවන් මෙතන මේක ඔන් කරා ඔන් කරාට පස්සේ ඒක සටහන් වෙනවා ඊළඟට ඒගොල්ලෝ කියනවා ස්ටෑන්ඩ් බයි කියලා වදිනවා ඒක වැදුණාට පස්සේ අපිට පුළුවන් මේ ප්‍රෝබ් එක මේ ප්‍රෝබ් එක දානකොට මේක හරි වැදගත් මෙන්න මෙතනදී තියෙන නියපොත් ඒ කියන්නේ ඇඟිල්ල සටහන් වෙලා ඊට පස්සේ වයර් එක ඒකට සටහන් වෙලා තියෙනවා අන්න ඒ පැත්ත තමයි නියපොත්තේ උඩට එන්න ඕනේ එතකොට ඒ එන විදිහට يعني يعني මේ යට පැත්ත නෙමෙයි නියපොත්තට එන්න ඕනේ ඊට පස්සේ ඒ පැත්තේ තියෙනවා මේ මේ පේනවා ඕගලන්ට ලයිට් එකක් රතු පාටට ලයිට් එකක් තියෙනවා ඒ කියන්නේ රතු පාට ලයිට් එක තියෙන්නේ ඇයි මේ මේ ප්‍රෝබ් එකේ රතු පාට ලයිට් එකක් තියෙන්නේ ඒකට හේතුව තමයි අපි හැමෝමල දන්නවා ඔක්සිජන් ප්‍රවාහනය කරන්නේ HB එක يعني අපේ ඇඟේ තියෙන රුධිරයේ තියෙන හිමෝග්ලොබින් හරහා හිමෝග්ලොබින් වල තියෙන එක නේක රතු පාටයි ඒ සෙන්ස එක තමයි මේ අරගෙන ගිහිල්ලා මේකෙන් අපිට සැචුරේෂන් එක පෙන්වන්නේ ඉතින් අන්න ඒ හින්ද අපි මේක ගන්නකොට ඒ ලයිට් එක නියපොත්තට වැදෙන විදිහට මේක ඇරලා මේ විදිහට ඇඟිල්ලට තද කරනවා ඒ එහෙම තියාගත්තට පස්සේ අපිට පුළුවන්කම තියෙනවා මෙතන වේව් එකක් එනවා ඒ නියමිත වේව් එක ලබා ගන්න අපිට තප්පර 20ක 30ක විතර කාලයක් ප්‍රෝබ් එක ඇඟිල්ලට දාලා ඉවරලා තබා ගන්න සිදු වෙනවා මෙන්න මේ වගේ වෙන ඒ වේව් එක ආවට පස්සේ ඒ කියන්නේ ඒක තරංගයක් වගේ වෙනවා මෙන්න මේ හැඩේ අපිට හරි වැදගත් ඒ හැඩේදී අපි දන්නවා මෙයාගේ මේ උදින් වැටෙන්නේ අපිට සැචුරේෂන් එක කොච්චරද කියලා ඒත් එක්ක මේ වැටෙනවා එයාගේ පල්ස් රේට් එක නාඩි වේගය එතකොට ඒ දෙකම මේකෙන් අපිට බලාගෙන රෝගියාගේ එක සටහන් කරගන්න පුළුවන්. ඉතින් එතකොට ඒ කට් එක අපිට මේ මේ රෝගියාගේ සැචුරේෂන් එකයි නාඩි වේගයයි ඒ දෙකම හොඳයි කියන එක අපිට සටහන් පවත්වගෙන යන්න පුළුවන්. එතකොට ඊට පස්සේ අපිට තියෙන්නේ මේක ගලවන එක. මේක ගැලෙව්වට පස්සේ අපි මේක ක්ලීන් කරගන්න ඕන. ක්ලීන් කරගන්නකොට ඒක වැදගත් දෙයක් තමයි අපි සොප් එක අරගෙන मेहमे <laughs> මෙහෙම අරගෙන ඉවරලා මේ ඇතුලත් අපි ක්ලීන් කරනවා රෝගියාට දාලා තියෙන ප්‍රමාණය. ඊට පස්සේ තමයි අපි තව සොප් දෙකක් අරගෙන අපිට පුළුවන්කම තියෙනවා මේ කටියත් මෙහෙම ක්ලීන් කරගන්න. ඔහොම ක්ලීන් කරලා අපිට ඒක අයින් කරලා දාන්න පුළුවන්. මේකේ වැදගත් දේ ක්ලීනින් වලදී මම පහදිලි කරලා දෙන්න ඕනේ එක තමයි ඊතයිල් ඇල්කොහොල් සොප් එකට ගත්තාම ඒක බේරෙන්න ගත්තොත් එහෙම එතකොට මොකද වෙන්නේ මේ මේවා මේ සෙන්සර්ස් මේවා ඇතුළට ගිහිල්ලා ස්ට්‍රීට් එක මේක සෙන්ස් එක වැඩ කරන්නේ නැති වෙනවා. ඒ හින්දා අපි ක්ලීනින් වලදී වැදගත්ම දේ තමයි හොඳට කඩට මිරිකල අරගෙන මේක ක්ලීන් කරන්න ඕනයි කියන එක. ඉතින් මම හිතන්නේ අපි මේ සැචුරේෂන් බලන එකේදී අද පහදලා දුන්නා කොයි විදිහටද මේක නිසියාකාරව නිවැරදිව කරන්නේ කියලා ඊට පස්සේ අපිට පුළුවන්කම තියෙනවා මේ සටහනේ ඒක යොදවන්න. Any questions? Prashamana Hari Mishra, do you have any questions? I have a question. Is the chart available at any hospital now? No, not available at any hospital, but we are going to circulate in the WhatsApp group. So, try it for about two weeks and send your comments to the email that I have mentioned. Prashamana Hari Mishra, do you have any questions? Yes, sir. That's it. That's it. Thank you very much, uh, Hasit, uh, Dr. Hasit Atnaikar, Director IDH, Dr. Ananda Vijay Vikram sir, Dr. Damianti Dampiti, and Dr. Geeta Ani Udugam Koorala. For I mean, they have uh, had an enormous uh, support during developing this uh, chart, uh, observation chart. Uh, that is uh, that, that is really appreciated on behalf of Ministry of Health and also for. Uh, having this uh, lecture discussion uh, throughout about for almost now 3 hours uh, 
thank you very much for uh, agreeing to prepare this presentation and also preparing the chart as well. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, and also the participants who came here.